sorry, man. That's all right. I want to listen to it because I've always heard that Kerry King is not a cool dude. Like, I've never met him, but I've, like, that's the, you know, the rumor on, I don't know, what you know, whatever metal fucking, you know, geek form or whatever. They're like, man, Kerry King is not cool, et cetera. I want to check it out, you know. So, before we, we, we got to wrap up here shortly, I want to ask a question, Matt, because your fight is coming up. On December 30th, you're fighting on the card where Ronda Rousey is returning. I know you're a big Ronda Rousey fan. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, I've been throwing this question out to some people, and I've been doing it kind of anonymously. And we're actually working on a story for this. I'm kind of blowing my lead by, by talking about it on the podcast. But I want to get your opinion, uh, because you're about to fight on the card with Ronda Rousey. I'm curious, from a fighter perspective, and again, none of this may even matter to you. I don't know. I'm just talking about like attention and, and people like curiosity, whatever. If you had a choice to fight on the card headlined by Ronda Rousey or headlined by Conor McGregor, which one would you choose? If you could choose, which one would you rather be a part of? Um, probably Conor. Just because I, I just, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Conor's, you know, to a certain extent. Um, and and is, when, you, when you, I assume you're probably asking from the perspective of getting eyes on me or exposure or whatever like that. And I don't think about that at all. I mean, I only that's really irrelevant to the way that I would uh, view that. So when I view it, I think of, uh, you know, who do I respect more as a fighter? And I don't really have a lot of respect for Ronda, to be honest. I mean, I mean, she's done some great things for women's MMA and I respect that. And she got in the UFC and I respect that, but, um, you know, her attitude, I just don't respect. So, um, she's probably not going to change that. So, it will be interesting to see if she does change a little bit as she's coming back. You know, I, I think that there there is there is a uh, there is something to her being champion for so long, and I think that she she obviously has heard over the years what the right thing to do and what the wrong thing to do is, and it's one it's one's got to wonder if it's gonna all come into play as she comes back. You know, can she get it all together and win the hearts back of America, so to speak? Because I think her hardcore fan base never went anywhere. Um, I, I kind of look at her case from like, uh, I, I don't know, from understanding eyes and I'm really, really interested to see if she can pull it together and be the Ronda Rousey she was. Cause I mean, this is no easy fight that she's walking back into. Well, I, I would disagree that about her, a hardcore fan base. I bet I would, I would, um, uh, I would lean towards that more of those probably left than the casuals who are just you know fans of ronda no matter what because she's ronda rousey and she was on the fucking ellen show um no, probably, <laughs> I, I would bet that she probably turned off some of her hardcore fans and uh you know for me i mean i just i just look at it different you know i look at you know what's your you know what are you in this sport for you know what's your motivation and and when you look at someone like her that you know one loss destroys you like that and I mean, we went over this whole thing about, you know, the, the talking about suicide, you know, my kids watch that shit, you know, I don't want to hear her talking about that crap, you know, when my kids are watching that show, but, um, you know, when, when you let one loss do that to you, what it's done to her, I don't respect that because that means your motivation is different than, than it should be. It's not pure. It's not, you know, it, it's just not, um, you know, what I would call satisfactory. I mean, it's just, I, I wouldn't, I don't, I choose not, I, I try not to surround myself with people that are motivated by those external factors like that. You well, know, you it's know, all about good. Well, you know how some fighters are like, you know, like how you react to a loss, you know, kind of defines you. And I'm not saying that like, yeah, I'm not judging, I'm not judging Ronda because she wanted to take time off after a loss. Like I, you know, when you get head kicked, knocked out like that, like I'm not an advocate saying she shouldn't have taken time off because yes, you should allow your brain to heal. You know what I mean? Don't rush back into it. But I look at a guy like Connor when he lost to Diaz, dude, like from all the stories I've heard and from talking to Connor and the people close to Connor, like the moment he lost to Nate Diaz, he was obsessed obsessed mm -hmm. with getting back in there and beating him. And he spent every waking moment of every waking day to get back in there and prove himself to beat Nate Diaz. And I think that, you know, like I know I'm not talking about the health aspect. Like I'm taking that out of it because obviously you got to be careful with your head and the brain injuries and things like that. But I'm quite sure you know, every fight you've ever had, Matt, every time you've lost, you wanted to get right back in there and be like, fuck this. I'm going to win. You know what I mean? Like that's the attitude 
And I think that's what we didn't see out of Ronda. You know what I mean? We didn't see that. We didn't see that fire. We didn't see that, like, determination out of her right away. Even if she said, I'm not going to come back for a year, but when I come back, I'm going to fuck up Holly Holm. Like, we didn't hear any of that. You know what I mean? Like, Right. No, I think you're right. Now, my question is, do you think that she learned from that, and do you think that she will take that attitude in the future? I, I don't. Again, it's because of, uh, you know, what are you in this for? What's your motivation? And I don't see hers as being pure, you know, um, Connor's, you know, he, his Connor is, is nothing special in that regard. Every single time a fighter loses, that's all you can think about for a while. You know, I mean, just, uh, you know, 99% of us don't get the rematch. So we have to move on in other ways. Right. But yeah, for sure. You know, you know so, you know, um, he was able to get the rematch. So he was uh, allowed to take that obsession and, and work towards it. Um, you know, Ronda just, yeah, again, I mean, I, I just don't respect it. I mean, she just didn't show anything like that. I mean, it was, you know, I thought she was going to quit. I'm surprised if she came back. She proved me wrong on that, I guess. So, you know, more power to her. Um, yeah, now we're going to, and remember, I said that before, uh, right after she lost to Holly. We did a podcast, and I said, now we're going to find out who Ronda really is. And we found out. she It's been almost a year. Has it been a year? I mean, I don't know. It's been exa- like exa- exactly a year in November. Like, November 15th will be exactly okay. a year. Yeah, there you go. I mean, we found out who she is. She's a quitter. And that's not uh, the type of pe- person that I respect. It's not the type of person that I want my kids to be looking up to, et cetera, et cetera. I could go on through all that stuff. The fact is, you know, that's not the type of person that uh, I, I want to um, be around or or – you know, have, um, you know, be, you know, I don't want her energy around my energy, basically. You're going to make for a really, if she listens to this podcast and make for a really awkward uh, dressing room, if you have to share a locker with her at UFC 207. <laughs> well, I guarantee I won't have to share a locker room with her. But. Yeah. Yeah. It will be really interesting because Colleen will be in there like WTF. Like, what? yeah, right. <laughs> but I'll probably see her. Maybe at some point I'll see her, but you know, whatever. I'm, I mean, what's she gonna do? Beat me up? I don't. I mean, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I love that you speak, you speak your mind. It doesn't matter. You know, you speak your mind. I like that. Yeah, and I, I only, you know, so that's one of the difficult things about doing, you know, the shows. We you know when you talk about things like that is because you know I do, I respond to questions. A lot of things I don't necessarily say in public, but then when I'm asked, I'm like, okay, well, yeah, this is how I feel. So. You know, you kind of got to, you know, draw the, you kind of got to, there's a fine balance there. You got to kind of tread the, the line there. Yeah. Well, I know you said in the past, we talked about Connor too. So I know Cowboy, I'm sure you saw Cowboy said, none of the fighters actually like Connor. And I, I don't think that's true. I think there are fighters who like Connor. I know you, you actually, I think you said you did talk to Connor backstage at that one presser you did with him, right? That one go big presser, or whatever. Actually, I, no, I've actually spoken to him a couple of times. So I, I fought on the same card when he fought Max Holloway. And we were both backstage. He was cool. I mean, he would, um, I didn't know who he was. I didn't, you know, I didn't realize he was, you know, supposed to be the next star or anything. And of course, Holloway was, I think that was his debut fight maybe. So he, one of, one of his first fights. So we didn't know who he was either. So we didn't know how good of a win that really was for Connor. Um, but yeah, so, you know, and then, yeah, the go big presser, I talked to him just briefly, you know, he had a lot going on and I think he had to, uh, it was after the pressers. So he he kind of had to dip out before he got jumped by like twenty fighters. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what? Good. Like I said, man. I, I just you know, like I said, I like Connor. I think there are fighters who like Connor, and you can't help but respect Connor. You may not like him, but you can't help but respect the guy for what he does and what he the eyeballs he brings to the sport. Like I said, he's uh, you know, like I said, I I you know, I don't I don't I understand if you don't like him from a fight aspect. You want to beat the guy. You want to fight the guy. I get that. If you're Jose Aldo, you're Eddie Alvarez or whoever, I totally get that. But especially the way he talks smack on everybody, I totally understand that. But, like, at the end of the day, you can't help but respect the guy as far as, you know, what he does and the eyeballs he brings to the sport. Yeah, and, and you know, I don't look at I, – I don't even look at that part of it, you know, the the eyeballs that bring to the sport. I mean, there's – I think there, the, there's enough eyeballs on the sport. Where this, this sport can be grown organically. Um it's a people the people like connor are just accelerating the growth i think those people would eventually come anyway but you know who am i to say i mean i'm not a businessman like that but what i do respect out of connor is what i'm getting at is that he is a martial artist he is a true martial artist right that that's 
you know, he's, I, I think, uh, you know, he probably, I, I'm going to uh, guess, I don't know for a fact, but um, he probably trains humbly, trains hard. You know, he obviously puts in the work. I mean, those are the things I respect. I mean, that's what I believe, uh, um, you know, that that's what, that, that's what life is all about. You know, it's not about, uh, you know, being rich and famous. So, uh, yeah, that's what I respect him for personally. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, we got to wrap this up. Uh, I know you got another interview coming up, Matt, and I got to interview myself. Uh, let's do this again. We, we got away from the podcast for a long time. People were like, think we're pissed at each other. Like, are you and Matt not talking anymore? Are you and Loper not <laughs> talking? I was like, I was like, no, I hang out with Loper all the time. And Matt, like, it's still, I think I've texted with you numerous times. So I was like, people are, people are always like, are you guys mad at each other? Like, would you have a falling out? And I was like, yeah. Loper and Matt got into a fight one day at the gym and like, you know, it was really nasty and I had to break it up. And like, yeah, so. I'm sick of Loper's goo goo dolls. Yeah. I'm like, Love. I don't want the world to know this. <laughs> All right, listen, guys, this has been a lot of fun, man. People can hit me up at Jeremy Loper. I love talking to you guys, and uh, you know, it's it's just awesome to see how much uh, the fight game continues to grow. It's so much fun to watch. I'm excited about Matt's next fight coming up. We got MSG in a couple of weeks. So good to talk to you guys, man. All right, boys. Yep. Well, we'll awesome. do this. We'll do this again soon. This will not be. Uh, this will not be the last time we 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 get back together for this podcast because I miss doing it. Now that we're back together, I'm like, damn it. This is this is too much fun to not do this again. Yeah, yeah. We, we got to keep it up, man. I don't mind doing it anytime. Just so you know, got to focus on those fights, man. That's how that's how I bring the put the put the bacon and butter on my table i was gonna say go get that go get that bacon and butter that's how you gotta get (laughs) (laughs) that ketogenic diet's expensive Uh, all right boys well we will uh we will talk soon and uh and thanks for doing the podcast today all right later 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 guys later guys later guys later guys later guys